This video is sponsored by the Magic Candle Company. Visit magiccandlecompany.com and use the offer code OFFHAND15 for 15% 15 off your entire purchase. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. When Disneyland opened in 1955, it was a massive shift for both the theme park and the entertainment industry. The technological innovations and the cultural impact of Disneyland can't really be understated, and they can only have come from the mind of one man. Disneyland is the only Disney theme park in the entire world that was personally overseen by Walt Disney himself. Disneyland was a passion project for Walt, one that took a very heavy toll on his bank account. One passion project that, it seems, was worth it in the end. When Walt wasn't at the studios or at home, you could often find him walking about at Disneyland. Sometimes he'd be picking up trash, sometimes he'd be driving the main street vehicles down toward the castle, and sometimes he'd just be watching guests and asking them what they thought of his park. This makes Disneyland not only unique to Walt Disney World, but also every other Disney park across the entire world. Walt Disney walked the streets of Disneyland. And if you know where to look, odds are that you can find the exact same spots Walt Disney stood all those years ago. So today, join me as we find those very same spots in Walking in Walt's Footsteps. When Disneyland opened on Sunday, July 17th in 1955, Walt Disney gave a very famous speech in front of the train station on Main Street, USA. A speech very important to Disney history and the intro to my channel. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Thank you. A speech that would truly go down in history, and after Walt was done giving this speech, this photo was snapped of him in front of the train station. This photo that I tried my best to recreate here. Next, what would a trip to Disneyland be without a visit to Main Street, USA? Impossible is what it would be. You'd really have to go out of your way to get in or out of Disneyland without visiting Main Street. The next image we have is a very famous photo of Walt overseeing maintenance of the tracks on Main Street, USA, going down towards the castle. This picture was almost certainly taken in the early morning before the park opened to the public, and it really just goes to show you all the care that Walt put into making Disneyland the best it could be, even after it opened. Keep in mind though, we couldn't really get to the exact same spot where the camera was because there's a giant tree there this time of year. But but we sure did the best we could. So here is my best attempt at a video recreation of this image. Magic show, we take a picture and then we insert a graphic on it. Okay, so look at this way, you guys are gonna be inside a snow globe, okay? So look this way. Yet another very famous image of Walt Disney is him walking around yet again before the park opened in Fantasyland, walking under the empty corridors of Sleeping Beauty Castle. Disneyland's construction was one that, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, was very strenuous and very, very quick. Construction for the park began on July 16th of 1954 and finished exactly 366 days later. Exactly one year and one day after they initially broke ground, which is crazy by today's standards. To put that into perspective, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland, one land will have taken about three years to construct and open, whereas Disneyland, an entire theme park took only one, but Galaxy's Edge may be a bit more complicated than the original Disneyland was, so I'll give them a pass for this one. At least I sure hope it is. Either that or they're taking their sweet, sweet time. Either way, I'm getting distracted. I have this picture of Walt Disney pacing around Sleeping Beauty's castle during construction. This picture was probably taken uh, one or two days before the park's opening. And here is my best recreation of this photograph.
Lastly, let's talk New Orleans Square. No, not the mansion today, sadly. Now I was going to explain to you guys the history behind New Orleans Square and how it came to be, but I figured why not just let Walt do that? So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Walt Disney. Disneyland has always had a big river and a Mississippi sternwheeler. It seemed appropriate to create a new attraction at the bend of the river. And so Disneyland's New Orleans Square came into being. A New Orleans of a century ago when she was the gay Paris of the American frontier. In 1803, the United States wanted New Orleans for a port. In order to get it, we had to make a package deal with Napoleon. He insisted that we buy the peripheral area. So we threw in an extra million and ended up with 800,000 square miles. The Louisiana Purchase was probably the greatest real estate deal of all time. It included all of this territory from the Gulf to Canada. Total cost, $11 million. And by the way, Disneyland's New Orleans Square alone cost 15 million. But of course, a dollar went much further in those days. It was a gala day when we officially opened New Orleans Square. We had a real jubilee, Southern style. The opening day for New Orleans Square at Disneyland was probably the coolest thing that had happened at the park since it opened. This picture was taken on opening day of New Orleans Square and it shows Walt standing with the mayor of New Orleans underneath what is now known today as the Royal Street Veranda. Not quite sure what it was back in those days, but I'm pretty sure they didn't have the delicious fritters and gumbo that they do today. And here is my video recreation of this image. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, whether it's Main Street USA, Fantasyland, or New Orleans Square, odds are if you're at Disneyland, you are walking in Walt Disney's footsteps. And if you guys have any cool, interesting Walt Disney stories or connections, or just some fun vintage Disneyland stories, I'd love to hear them down in the comments below. I'd really like to thank you all for watching this video, you are the people who made this trip to Disneyland possible, so thank you all so very much. And remember that this video is sponsored by the Magic Candle Company, go over there and use code offhand and you get 15% off your purchase and it helps out my channel a whole lot. I personally use their products and I'm a huge fan of them and they have bath bombs and oils now in addition to candles. So what are you waiting for? Go check them out. There will be a link down in the description below. As always everybody, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.